You ain't even sweating. Oh my God, I'm drenched wet from sweat. Hold on, we're gonna do a you sock. You poured water on you. I didn't pour water on me. You did too, my hair is completely soaked. And so Camera my don't lie, Jamie. <laughs> okay, Jamie. <laughs> Well, hey folks, Lester and Jamie here, and we are headed over to Longhorn Lester's. Today's an exciting day. Uh, we are getting the mailbox put up. We've waited for a while, and how little did, did we know that you actually have to, by law, have a mailbox? We did yes. not know that. We were never going to have a mailbox because we don't want anyone to send us letters or bills or packages <laughs> or deliveries here at Longhorn Lester's. We get plenty of that especially the bills over at the I'm a survivor and a mailbox is a mailbox but we found a guy we found a guy who I really hope is going to be as good as what people say he is and he's going to build us a mailbox that's going to match the columns that the other fella used around the entrance and so he's also after he's done with the mailbox he's also going to finish the job that the contractor did not finish and put those caps over on the columns. And he's also going to finish up that job by pulling those big uh, posts together. So we're on our way over there now. I'm gonna video this process and show you guys how it comes out. And uh, I've never seen stonework being done. Me neither. So I'd be very intrigued to see how this all ties together. All right, so what you guys are seeing here is the foundation to what's going to be our mailbox. Now, this over here is our friend, Cito. And hello, Cito, how are you? Hi, how are you? And uh, he's the guy who's going to be doing the mason work to fix this. So, explica, señor, en español, está bien, lo que tienes que hacer. Uh, so, I'll translate to you guys. Yeah, voy a poner más bloques. So, he's going to put some blocks first. Más... Uh, Concrete mix. And then he'll put some concrete mix. Uh, so it's going to be inside the blocks? or yeah, uh, okay, in medio. Okay. Yeah, a la orilla. So he'll go around the edges. Uh huh. Es la, la stone. With the limestone. And we have right. the limestone right over there. We already got the limestone here. Okay. And so, ¿dónde va a poner la caja? And so, where are you going to put the mailbox? Uh, cuando ya la piedra llegue acá, so, when he gets all the stone built up to altura, about this level, uh huh. Yo voy a poner la caja. Okay, he'll put the box right there. La piedra acá de este lado va a continuar. So the stone around the sides will continue on up Pero with the aquí, mailbox. Aquí ya no va a seguir porque aquí va a estar la caja. Yeah, so the mailbox itself will go right there at the right level and the stone will go up around it. Okay. Con, con piedra acá. And then he'll round off the top. That's perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We're very Thank blessed you, to have you. Right, so you. once he's finished with the mailbox, he's going to also come over here. We talked about this, and he's going to figure out a way. I don't know exactly what his plans are here, but he's going to figure out a way to also, you have to cover this. And guys, don't forget, if this is not covered with some kind of a cap, water that falls down through there is going to settle. Don't forget, he had to dig down about a foot, and so that water is just going to set there. It's going to absorb into our wood and begin to rot. It's going to also mess up our foundation of our of our limestone. So that will have to be a job that we'll address. A lot of people ask, why don't we just cut it or drill a hole and let that water run out? That might would work out for here, but what about the foot down below where that water's still setting, where it can't right, drop? So let me see one. Uh, these are the screws that Mr. Cito, uh oh, let me have one, that Mr. Cito is going to use to tie all those together. And this is what should have been done before. If this had been done the right way, then you wouldn't have all of that splitting up there. So that's good. Now I wonder, oh yeah, so it's not gonna go all the way through. That's perfect size, Cito. You know? So that will tighten up in there and that will pull all of those together and then we'll do the same thing over on that side. So you're gonna put two on each side, dos en cada lado? Yeah. So he'll put two on each side. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Beverly. Gracie, you're looking good. Oh, my sweet Pearl. How are the babies, Pearl? You babysitting? Santoro's like, I'm not a baby. I'm a big boy. Santana's like, move your butt, Pearl. Daddy's come to feed us. What's going on with Dixie over there? What is Dick? Is she stuck? Oh, no. Has Dixie got herself stuck? Dixie? Guys, I think her hair is stuck. 
Oh no! Dixie! Baby, what are you doing? Is she stuck or is she scratching? Baby, what are you doing? Are you stuck or are you scratching an itch? She's just scratching an itch, I think. Come here, baby. Oh, I thought she was stuck. Baby, are you stuck? I don't know if she's stuck. I, need her, I see her tail. Sweetie, come out of there. Come on. You're being silly. Okay, you scared me. I thought she was stuck, baby. I thought she was stuck, everybody. Sweetie, you're not stuck. Come on, guys. How you all doing? Oh, man. That put Daddy for a scare. I see you're hanging out with the family. That's good. They're letting you hang out with the family. That's really good, Pearl. You're being a sweet mama. Y'all notice? Okay. Do -do 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 You've asked for it, folks, and you got it. Uh, notice how this is cute that you can see which side of the bag. Pearl, we're trying to look at your bag. Would you please stop being so modest all of a sudden? Uh, you can always tell which side of the udder the baby eats from because just like you would deflate a balloon, you can see some sides, some compartments of the udder are a little less full than others. But uh, the baby looks pretty good. I think the baby's eating fine. Tex, don't gouge me, please. Uh, can I, you gonna run away from daddy? Oh my God, no, it's finally happening. It's finally happening. She's gonna run away from daddy. I'm gonna yank that thing off her. God, no, I missed it. I missed it, Pearl. Oh, I had it. I had it and I missed it. It was right in my hand and I just didn't. Sorry, Pearl. I just tired of seeing that thing hanging there for a year. So, all right, let's go feed up. Let's go feed up. Everybody. So I'm going to check out this hay. So we got to be real careful, y'all. Whenever the baby comes up around the barn, this is where bad things can happen. So I'm not going to actually feed in the stalls. You already know that I've have, I've stopped feeding in the stalls until the babies get a little bit bigger and able to move around a little bit, bit you know. But um, I don't want that baby to get pinned in one of the corners and get hurt. So what I've been doing is I have the feed troughs kind of scattered around the pasture here. And I will uh, feed them out in the rounds. They all have plenty of room to move. <laughs> what are you doing? You look so dorky when you put your head up over the things like that. And uh, I thought you were stuck over there, baby. That scared Daddy that you'd gotten stuck, and I didn't even know it. I just can't stop looking at that baby, y'all. I just cannot stop looking at that baby. Because look how cute she is. She's got some long legs. She does. She has some really long legs. And I don't know if I remember the other babies having such long legs. But, you know, every other baby has come from Tex. So I kind of think that Tex has, I think, for the most part, kind of short legs. I think that he's a fairly short-legged bull. I don't know exactly the length. I've never really looked at or the, the other bull's legs. That's not something that Lester normally goes around looking at. Not on bulls. Not on bulls. All right, so now I got some feed spread out all around the pasture. Well, look who's so curious about the stall. She's like, which one will be my stall, Daddy? Which one will be my stall, Daddy? I want to know where my stall's going to be. Because I'll be a good girl. I'll go in a stall. I'm not going to give you a hard time, Daddy. And Tex is like, don't ever give in to the man. You never give in to the man. Now, these two have their own troughs. They just choose to share, y'all. They choose to share. And I want to tell you why they choose to share. This is cute. This is how animals are dependent on each other. In this case, Beverly is dependent on Dixie to keep her safe. If Beverly had gone to her very own bucket. Oh, no. Look who's also taking this chance to eat. If Beverly had gone to her very own food trough, then what would happen is any one of these, these cows, when they finish, would have come by and run her off because she's, in fact, lower on the totem pole, the hierarchy, 
than what Dixie is. No one's gonna run Dixie off though. So Beverly knows that if she can hang out and eat alongside Dixie, then whenever this trough is empty, they will move to another trough and run off any of those animals. Uh, I would stand here and show you, but it's too hot. Just believe me, y'all. Just believe me when I say it. Just believe me when I say it. So, yeah. So, once again, if Beverly, let's just say that Beverly had gone off to that trough over there and begin to eat on it. As soon as any of these larger cows would have finished their trough of food, they would have walked straight to her and run her off of it. She'd find herself with nothing. But instead, she's like, you know what? I'll team up with Dixie because whenever we finish this trough, Dixie will go run these guys away. And in saying so, she'll get even more food than the other way around. Very clever there. Very clever, Beverly. Very I clever. Have extra wire here that I'm gonna take home over to I'm a Survivor. And that's because we have a big galoot named Moo who keeps getting out. And I gotta do some more fencing over there to keep that sucker in. Oh, yeah. All right, one job that I've been dreading for the last week or so is having to move all of these extra cattle panels that are very cumbersome and very hard to move. I have to get them out of this pasture before we bring the ostriches over. And I'm gonna move them out towards the barn so that I can use them when I build the corral. Now, I could load them onto a trailer, drive them over and unload them, or I'm trying to think smarter, not work harder. I'm gonna try to back the tractor up, hook them onto the ball and simply drag them over. You guys wish me luck on this one. problem is that the hitch doesn't go down any lower than that right there. That's as low as it goes down. I'm going to have to try to find a way to lift these up so I can get the ball under. Guys, if the ball doesn't go under here somewhere in the middle, they're going to pull sideways and end up rubbing against the tire, possibly puncturing one of the tires. So I have to get the ball right in the middle to pull them straight. What I'm going to do is use a little technique I learned from my dad. I'll use this bucket. This is an old bucket that had the stain. I'm gonna use this tool. Any kind of a leverage tool would work. So y'all watch what I'm about to do here. I hope that somebody can learn something from the things I get myself into. I need to put my camera down and video this. All right, so I can't capture those bottom few because they're all bent up. I'm hoping I can hold on to these. The ball doesn't go all the way through them, so these on the top may want to slide off. What I'm going to try to do, see, I don't want them to, I don't want them to slide off. So what I'm going to do is look around for something. I see an old piece of string here. This is an old band. I can try to tie these so they don't slide off. Just gonna tie them together. It won't take a lot to hold them on here. If you can keep the top from sliding, then the bottoms are gonna stay because they are already, the weight of the ones on the top are gonna hold them on. So that's my goal. So I tied these on there so they can't really start sliding off on me. Let's get the pull in and see what happens. Now I will come back with the trailer and pick up all of this. There's no way to drag it all. But if I can drag these out of the way, that'll be a whole lot of work. Less work. A lot of less work. And there ain't nothing wrong with less work.
Today we are working smarter, not harder. How about that? How we looking back there, guys? How we looking back there? Swing out kind of wide to make this turn. It's kind of like driving a school bus. And I know all about driving a school bus. We're still making it, folks. We're still making it. The guy working at the end of the road, if he needs more cement, we have leftovers from our fence building. And you can try to save this stuff, but just the humidity in the air alone is enough to make it, it affects it. So you can, this stuff does have a shelf life, believe it or not. This is cement, if you can't see what I got in there. That's, that's the cement bags of cement. And uh, as of now, they're still good, but they've been sitting on this trailer for several days. And I can't imagine that I'll be doing any more fencing projects for a while, not in this heat. So I'll let him know that I have seven or eight bags he's welcome to use. That may save him a couple of dollars. Now, these panels here are no good. As you can see, they got bent when the guy delivered them. And so what you normally do is if you take a picture, and I'll take it with me to McCoy's, they'll refund the money on these. They're, they're good for nothing at this point. Yet, I say good for nothing, believe it or not, I could cut the ends off of these or turn them over sort of like a sled, a snow sled. And guys, these would, these could become great drags for the pasture because the ends are bent. It's not going to catch and grab anything that you wouldn't want it to grab. You can just drag it over the pastures and it will spread out all the poop and create our very own fertilizer for our pastures. That's what I'm going to do with these. I'm going to leave them right here get the four-wheeler, and make me a little drag out of those right there. The rest of this trash needs to be picked up, though. Those will go to my burn pile. So, how neat. I'll get my money back, yet I'll get me a drag. Ha-ha. Is that cheating the system? Is that is that considered cheating the system? I'm going to stick it to the man. I'm going to stick it to the man, like Tex teaches us. You know, that bull's rubbing off on me, y'all. That bull is rubbing off on me. Jamie's going to be so upset with me. But this is the kind of thing that will be easier to apologize for than to ask permission. You've heard that expression. It's sometimes easier to apologize than to ask permission or something like that. Yeah, I'm burning the fire. I had to make a fire. There's so many pieces of scrap wood and just pieces of things that needed to be burnt from this pasture because I really cannot truly go by and do a pasture cleansing. But, you know, before I bring the babies over, the ostrich babies over without getting all this stuff out of here. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm making a fire, but I'm watching it and I have a water hose. So... I don't know why I'm talking so quiet. Jamie's way up over there by the shop. I don't think she can hear me. She might smell the smoke. But by then I'll say, baby, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got this thing down. It has been quite the day. Puppies have the right idea. Babies, that is the exact same thing that I feel like doing. I'm gonna get me a drink and then I'm gonna come over here and sit with you and love on you for a little while, okay? Oh, yeah, they're sweet girls. Oh, and everybody loves you so much. And I'm happy they do because you're a good girl. <laughs> you're a good girl. You're sweet and you're naughty. But together, y'all make a really nice team. A really nice team of crazy, wild and crazy gals. Your daddy's wild and crazy gals, all right. That's my wild and crazy gals right there. Yes, they are. <laughs> Gotta have one peek at the babies. The big babies before i leave look who's getting braver you know there was a few days where she would not leave that shop she would walk out the door but now she comes all the way out to the pasture with me even into the pasture come on sweetie you can come too 
I want you to notice though where the the sweet baby's at. Look where she's laying. Isn't that precious? She's all cuddled up there next to Tex. Tex is in the shade of that pine tree there by the pond, which is not much of a pond. To, folks, to be honest, that's not much of a pond. That is not at all what we envisioned when we wanted to have a pond. But it hasn't rained, y'all. It hasn't rained. But Santana's over here with Gracie laying there by the water trough. Which, I should go fill that up before I leave. Y'all hang. Y'all hold on one sec. Let's also see how far the puppies will go with me. I'm going to walk around the fence here. Go to the gate. Because I am not one to climb over. Even though I built this fence and I promise you it will hold me. She's not real sure if she wants to have any puppies over here and they know they know guys you can probably come a little closer just got to keep your eyes open stay alert <laughs> Millie's like nope uh Fiona you go first Fiona's like nope you go first Millie's like no you go first and they're gonna sit here and debate on who's gonna go first oh and Santana's gonna uh, Pearl's gonna be like neither one of y'all are gonna come any closer oh lord Pearl be sweet Pearl, be sweet. Y'all, I have to start dragging these pastures. Um, you know, we have the harrow at the other property. And we drag those pastures on a regular basis. But over here, I've never drugged the pastures. But it's time. My fear, my fear of dragging the pastures is that I'm going to end up tearing up more grass. And I don't want to do that because grass is scarce enough as it is. Grass is scarce enough as it is. Grass is scarce enough as it is. Yeah, when you start seeing the dirt showing through what used to be good thick grass, that's scary, my friends. And you can look all the way across there and there's just no good grazing grass right now. We need rain and we need it bad. What you need is just a soft, steady couple of inches here and there. Just a real soft, steady couple of inches. Well, I got the whole... Texas baby's sitting everybody right now. Texas baby's sitting both of them. Santor, he, uh, he does not want to be told that he's a baby. He does not want to be called a baby. Not at all. Well, there's my neighbors. Hey, neighbors! There's Miss Pat. And Mr. David, they're driving around. They're ready to do snacks. They're ready to feed up to their snacks. I hope they call them. Oh, no. Look. They don't have to call them because look who just knows. They just know. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs>